just for joining us. Welcome to the yeah, Life is Wood. Having, yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> well, how was the journey down? It was good. Yeah, it was good. A couple of stops for a few calls and meetings and service stations, as yes. per usual, but, but nothing that isn't normal. There wasn't any stage. like major traffic, which was a good thing. Mm -hmm. No, good you guys well. have definitely travelled the furthest for the podcast, so you guys get that award from us, I think, 100%. <laughs> uh, it's okay, we enjoy it. And for those that don't know who you are, tell us a bit about, about yourself, what you guys do. Yeah, so we're Kate and Jack, and we independently publish a magazine that tells maker stories from all over the world. And in the last, what, 16 months, we also started a podcast where yep. we travel to makers' workshops and share the story via a podcast. So it's been a fun five years next month, which is crazy. Oh my God, Time happy flies. almost anniversary of it. Yes, <laughs> it's exciting, but um, it's been a fun journey so far, hasn't it? It has indeed, yeah. It's taken us a lot of very, very cool places, met a lot of very cool people, and yeah, can't really ask for much more. Yeah. What made you start the journey? Well, well, I was a maker myself, so yeah. it kind of like came from there. Uh, when I, we finished university, um, I didn't really want to go and get myself a job. I kind of thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur, uh, and I've always enjoyed like you know doing furniture and things like that. So I thought, well, I'm going to try start my own business, and I did that for about three years, and I. F really struggled trying to tell my own story out with like Scotland you know and then um, after running my own business uh, I've done other things between that Jack was working down south at the time and then I joined you and uh, I wanted to what else I was doing other things and realized yeah that so you Kate had taken her own furniture yeah. business and then went to work for a furniture business in London because I was working down south at the time and the furniture business there, yeah. like it was very clear that what was so attractive to you about furniture making was that you could do your own thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do in a world where, and any woodworker that's listening to this, will, I'm sure they'll agree, <laughs> when you've got a world like Ikea and you've got a world of lower cost furniture, which all has its place, mm -hmm. but you're then trying to sell something that's your time, your materials, your finishes, your shipping, mm -hmm. like how do you boost all that, boost all that into a price, and then tell the customer, yes, it is X more than insert high street name here, but it's worth it. Yeah, and that really comes from telling your backstory because mm -hmm. that's what we buy from. We buy from people. We buy from experience. We buy from, you know, if you're hiring someone to do something, you're not hiring them for the hours they do it. You're hiring them from the lifetime of hours to make them be able to do it in that time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got this through the looking glass at what Kate was going through. Um, Kate and I were together long before uh, she came to London, long before she was a furniture maker. Mm. And I could kind of see this through that lens, which was quite interesting in the fact that I wasn't feeling the pain as such, but I could see the pain and see how much it weighed down on a maker and a professional maker, because that's what you were at the time. Yeah. So you came down to work in film. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've told this story and every yeah. time I say it differently I'm like, where do I start? Because I've well, done, done so lot, much. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like how do you condense your story, you know, into yeah. such a... Yeah. So you came down to work in film because I was working on a big film at the time yeah. and Kate's very, very experienced in woodworking machinery, which was very translatable into yeah. metalworking machinery and we need a metalwork machine runner for a CNC plasma cutter at the time. So Kate came on to our crew to do that. It's like, can't be that much more different than wood, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and we really just banked to that money with the knowledge that we knew we wanted to do something to solve mm -hmm. that problem that Kate had encountered and so many maker friends had encountered. The same problem that came up at dinner most nights, the same problem, like... Yeah. It wouldn't, have, uh, it wouldn't have fulfilled us to kind of continue with our career path without going back and solving that initial problem. Mm -hmm. So we set out to do it. We agreed we'd give it five years, which it'll be, May the 1st will be five years. We'd give it five years. And then we realised I was supposed to be years. working full, we'd, we basically decided one of us would go full time on it. Mm -hmm. One of us would continue to work full time. Um, I actually stepped away from my full time job early because we are makers can stand on its own two feet now. So I stepped away from my full-time job maybe 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. December, no, late November, early December, 22. And we've been doing We Are Makers full-time since. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
was going to ask that. Do you, I was going to say, is this full time or yes. do you have things going on in the background? But now no, it's, it's this is full time. time. This, this is, is our everything. livelihood now, which is a bit scary, but at the same time, it's uh, very fulfilling, though. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, it must be crazy to see something like literally just yeah. It's almost like you give birth to it and then you just see it grow Absolutely. up. People yep. are like, yeah. yeah, it's like our baby. If you yeah. see, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it is. is. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So you worked in TV and film and obviously Fedge. So both very creative backgrounds. Was it always going to be creative? Did you always know you, oh, yeah. you'd both work in creative fields? Yeah. We, yeah. Were, uh, we, we both studied product design. We both came out That's of... That's where we met. Oh, lovely. We both came out of Edinburgh Napier with uh, a product design degree. And both went very different routes with that. I went mechanical I then studied a mechanical engineering degree. You pursued hands-on learning with your furniture business mm -hmm. and credit to Kate through herself, hands like hands first, mm -hmm. knee See deep in just doing it yourself, which yeah. was awesome. Um, so yeah, I think it would have, and if it wouldn't have been We Are Makers and we didn't have this incessant problem that we wanted to solve, it would have been something else creative, you know, whether we'd have, I don't know, gone and built tiny houses or shepherd huts or... Something, something. Hands, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have always been TV and film for me, and it wouldn't have always been, or it may have always been furniture. There would be more likelihood, had we not come up against the problems we had, that I would have went into the furniture making with Kate full time than anything else. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then the We Are Makers was just a problem that needed solve, and it was in the creative field and it allowed us to be very creative with the way we solved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I suppose like um, most successful businesses are from those that solve problems so mm -hmm. you guys have really got to yeah, yeah really got to the root um, of it it is a huge well it was a huge task yeah and one that we didn't take lightly we knew that it was you know we were still creating a new business we still had to create that platform which is not easy but i think now over the fa five years we're starting to see that it is making an impact somewhere and it's going to take another five maybe another 10 years but yeah. like this we feel like we're just getting started now even though we've put yeah. all the groundwork in but now it's just like Built we the foundations. Give it five years, yeah. and now it's very. It became very clear at the end of year four that we should have said ten years. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard, those. Yeah. I suppose, but then, seeing I met you guys um, when you were at your yeah first and second edition, and now your tenth is coming out. So, so I've seen you grow massively, <laughs> seen yeah. the brand grow, and it's just yeah. it's so cool and so lovely to watch. And Thank you. I think I saw you guys are now in forty because there's a few sides to few sides to it. So we'll take the first one first, which is the magazine. Um, is it is a coffee table magazine? Is yeah. that how it's termed? Yeah. Um, how how was the journey into that into the publishing world? <laughs> Mental. <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. Mental. It's... Anyone that tells you to start a magazine to make money is a liar. Um, <laughs> straight up. So. <laughs> That was, we don't have any publishing background. No, it very much took a lot of research. Like, where do you start to go to print it? Like, copywriting, design, uh, shipping, uh, what else? How do you get in the closed doors of traditional yes, publishing? which is so difficult. Like, how do you yeah. get into the Barnes and Nobles of the world, which I'm very pleased to say we're in Barnes and Noble now, we're in WH Smith and all the airports. We're, yeah. we're all these places, but they are very closed door places traditionally, especially for a small independent magazine. Um, but I think the real reason for the magazine, yeah. we're talking to people that do real life things. Yeah. We need to do a real life thing. Yeah. We could have easily gone and set up a blog and talked to people and had a very, very low expenditure business, but it doesn't have the same impact as a real life thing. And also the kind of people that find a blog or the kind of people that find videos and find the podcast are people that are actively looking for the creative people. With a magazine you have this, and I don't really think it's possible to do with anything else, but you have this really unique ability to slide a physical product in front of someone. We're trying to get it at the moment. We're talking to Lufthansa, British Airways, about getting into their lounges because, like, it's in front of people. It looks good, so people, travellers with those lounges, they are well off people, will be picking it up, will be discovering makers, and they're the kind of people that can afford to buy from these makers. Mm -hmm. So, the, the magazine for us simply just had to be something physical to rep and tangible to represent the tangible things that the people we were talking to we're doing yeah but and, from, and from a product design background like it had to be a nice beautiful thing because yeah. we wanted it to be a product that someone will sit down <clears throat> and read and keep yeah. it's not just going to be something that goes in the bin afterwards yeah, so. yeah. which has been a very hard journey mm -hmm. but it has afforded the mission of getting more maker stories told a lot of leverage yeah. because it's a physical thing you can just put in front of people 
It's so cool. And obviously I've seen it. I don't know, has, has the design changed since it from each mm. one? Have they changed a bit? It's gone yeah. and you've noticed what works, what doesn't, and then you've gone with that. Yeah, we're kind of going, sorry, <clears throat> we're kind of going down that editorial route now yeah. rather than more like the book style. It's um, we now quarterly rather than biannual. So oh, wow. four times oh a year. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it, I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of manage four times yeah. a year. It's... Um, <clears throat> But yeah, it has changed. There's a lot more personality. Like we're putting ourselves more into mm. that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Starting with the 11th edition, we yeah. are actually going out to places to write. So it's always been, initially it was like snippets of maker stories. And then it became, as we grew more respect in the space, makers would give us more and more time. Yeah. yeah. So there were bigger, longer stories. And then now, then obviously we went quarterly. With going quarterly, we can be more time dependent I suppose you'd call yeah. it. Uh, we're covering an event in Australia uh, for the 11th edition yeah. which will be a big 16 page spread and we're looking to do more of that going forward so later this year we're hopefully going back over to America visas permitting we're going to see some great people over there from saddle makers to boot makers to woodworkers to all sorts and we'll be doing write-ups in the magazine about that rather than just the makers stories it'll also incorporate more of what we are doing and our write-ups on those people in the same way the podcast does is our conversations with those people yeah, yeah exactly yeah because as we were saying earlier before the camera yeah. was on um it becomes about you in the end and then people buy and in, buy into you guys exactly so, exactly. so it's, it's nice to have that element to it as well and is it all makers that can be featured in there is it anyone that makes or is it as particularly like crafting or, or wood or it's everyone I mean, it's a wide variety of different crafts. We try yeah. to keep that, you know, variety in every edition from different countries as well. Um, I think one of the mo the the thing we say is that the stipulation yeah. is full time mm. or, trying or trying to, to be, be full time. time. Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> we just don't have enough pages <clears throat> or enough time to cover everybody, so yeah. it really has to be we have to prioritise the people who who need it most. Yeah. Because ultimately, it's outbound PR. That's what a magazine is. A magazine article is outbound PR for someone. It's a chance for someone's story to get in front of thousands and thousands of people in a printed format. And we need to be respectful of the people that are giving it their everything. That's the people we yeah. Yeah. we try and concentrate on. Yeah. Because I imagine, has it changed now? Because I imagine when you started, it's like with everything, you're approaching people. But I imagine now people are approaching you yeah. to be featured. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, the time. So it must be quite hard overwhelming. trying to... Yeah. I can't remember the word, it's cipher through, is the term? Yeah, yeah. Cipher yeah. through, yeah. Yeah. And see what... Mm -hmm. and it's really difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. At the start, of course, we are in the UK, so we have a lot of UK makers, but now it really is kind of all over. And yeah. like yesterday, we had a, a Instagram and, call. Uh, the most wholesome call with uh, An Clay of Lagos. Everyone should <clears throat> check him out on yeah. Instagram. A Nigerian guy, still living in the village, he was born into yeah. from everything I know. And uh, called him on Instagram and just asked him if he wanted to be in the magazine. He's like, and, yeah, uh, I'd love to. Yeah, we sat and chatted for half an hour and then I've got some questions to get over him and then I'll write a piece on him and, yeah, it's just, it's everywhere. So we've done... It's lovely. Yeah, he really appreciated, like... Yeah. He says, I'm really trying to find places where I can put myself out there yeah. and for you to approach me, like, this is, yeah, this is what I need and yeah. th that's what we're trying to do. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was really good. So with... Edition 10, it'll, in print alone, not including the podcast or the documentaries or the socials and all the rest of it, in print alone, we'll have covered 383 makers from 41 different countries. Who knows how many different languages? Who knows how many different cities and towns? I, I just, I can't fathom it, <laughs> to be honest. If we've always talked about in the office, eh, just getting, you know that, like, map wallpaper? Yeah. And just start putting ping. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. scratch yeah. map, I suppose it'd be hard. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is crazy. And I feel like it, it adds such a diversity um, to the making world because all I see most on Instagram is people from, I suppose it's obvious thing, but UK and, and USA. Yeah. So we don't really see, yeah, much from, from other countries. I know that we're, Ruby and Monica UK, so obviously you'd know in yeah. Ireland. But um, yeah, it's nice to see, to get to get the other countries out and, mm -hmm. and to see who's making and what everyone's doing, because everyone learns from each other as well. So. And that's another real benefit of doing it in the magazine format, is that you don't know what you're getting when you turn the page. Yeah. There is no algorithm. This is fully detached from an algorithm. Yeah. This is... <laughs> 
Kate and I's choice. Yeah, like people yeah. are buying our choice of makers and our responsibility in that is to make good choices, right? To be yeah. very diverse in who we're speaking to, pick people from. You do a fantastic job of like spreading out who we spoke to. So if there's like, say five or 10 UK people, spreading them out across various editions, because we know we're doing the next edition and the next edition, it's, it's much easier to do. The plan, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Whereas, yeah, when you look at social medias, you will... It's just overwhelming, I would say 80% isn't it? of the people you'll find will be US, yeah. then UK, then Australian. Yeah. yeah. It's just... Just the way it is. Who it is, yeah. And I suppose, I love that, detached from the algorithm. That yeah. is a, yeah. that's a key back up in the headline. Yeah, that's a big ad. There's a bit of marketing there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Get that's that's big, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I was gonna say, put it on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's feeding into it. Um, so you've been, well, well, I imagine you've been, well, you spoke to people in different countries and you've been all over. What's been the most interesting place you've visited? Oh, and then you know what question will come after, which will probably be more difficult. <laughs> it's a hard one for me. Like, so our pal, I'm going to say our pal Tim. Tim our and, pal Tim, yeah. Tim and Tracy in uh, Canton, and Georgia, in the USA. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Tim was like a avid follower, kind of like, kind of not. What do you call him? Like a kind of just kept behind, just to support everything we did, liked it, shared it. And then one day he was like, I really... Never submitted his story, no, to be on it. No. Like, just loved what we were doing. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't bothered about being on the podcast or in the book. Yeah, just just kind of, he was just mission. always there. We always seen his name pop up. Yeah. And he messaged us one day to say, I want to make you a pen. So he's a pen maker. He makes everything, like the nibs, everything from scratch. By it's, the way, the engineering that goes into pens, if anyone that's listening to this hasn't checked out um, professional custom pen makers is wild it is a niche in so itself good. they do massive big shows in the US about it as well it's oh crazy God. all the it's pen mega. makers come yeah. together it's mega, it's mega. Um, so anyway he uh, said I want to make you a pen I was just a bit like really you want to make us a pen and he was like yep yeah, I've already decided what I'm doing um, what was the material we used cellulose Cell cellulose yeah cellulose yeah it's very expensive material yeah you're, you're not talking like a couple hundred pounds for a pen you're talking no. Fifteen hundred to five thousand dollars a pen. Yeah, you know. I know, right? I feel like that's a world I am. Um, yeah. It's a cool yeah. world, though. It is like, a cool I'm in the world. wrong business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. I suppose that's like big. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! I'm um, gonna have to look into it. Yeah, you need to. Yeah. And uh, the the actual nib. Um, what do you call? It? Not the nib, but the clip. Clip. Sorry, he engraved our logo into it. And he says, I'll, you know, I'll, sh I'll make it and I'll show you all the different steps. And I was like, oh, this guy's making us a pen. Like, what? What did I say to that? Anyway, um, he'd made it for us and he was like, I'm going to send it to Scotland. And I was like, um, I feel like that's such a big thing you did for us. I want to go and like come and collect it from you. So that was kind of like. Yeah, this isn't like a day's work. Like, yeah. To make a pen is like a, a solid week's work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, so we're like, we couldn't just accept that over postal no, and never speak it's to like, him. Oh, this must this <laughs> must have been like January and I was like, We've got to tell this guy's story in the magazine as well. So we were like, right, well, we're gonna share your story, so yeah. that's that's a that's a given. But um I said to Jack, why don't we just go to US and collect for him and why don't we take our podcast over there as well and do like a podcast with him? Jack was like, great idea. This was January and then by March we're already in America. So we literally just said, let's go, let's do it. Yeah, it was late, late January, mid, yeah. mid, mid January maybe. Oh and then we landed in March 14th, I think. Yeah. Or 10th, March 10th, we landed in the States. And uh, that's where it all kind of like, our travelling podcast came to light. Yeah. Um, and... I think that for me was their Canada, Georgia. For me, is where I feel like it's been my favourite place to be, just because yeah. of the memories. But like, it's su they're such great people. Every like, fortnight, we'll be on Zillow, which is right move for the US, looking <laughs> at houses in Canada, Georgia. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's become a it's become a common joke. Yeah, so just like they've become they've become like second family to us now. You know, oh, it's just like lovely. these connections that we've got from we are makers has been incredible. And uh, yeah, edition six, he was on the front cover with his hands and his pen, and yeah, just like and he, he was a cop for thirty years in the USA like a hard job and then he all just decided that he's always had this creative streak and he wanted to start making pens I mean like what <laughs> like the stories that you get from some of these makers are just like wow like they have introduced us to his friend Paul Hamler as well yeah Paul we did a podcast with uh, Paul Paul Hamler's a very intelligent 
in some ways unassuming, yeah. in some ways very assuming because of how intelligent he is. He basically buys <laughs> massive bits of machinery, strips them all down and makes tiny versions of them and that's his whole business and his, his, his fame that surrounds that. And uh, yeah, you're podcasting him and he's like, yeah, it used to work with Big Blue, IBM. Yeah. And, uh, and then I finished with NASA, so I took early retirement at NASA and I'm like, what? <laughs> It's sort of like blah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I work for NASA, you know. Yeah, and you're just like, <laughs> I'm what? not a rocket. And then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got Weldon Lister, who... It's engraver. Engraver, who... 19, 18, 19, so his dad was a master engraver, who taught him to engrave. And then 18, 19, he was engraving guns for Texas Rangers and stuff, and yeah. Ben, the saddle maker, who kind of ex-army, you've got Chris who's current, oh, everybody, I mean, Bryony, not far from here, Holly, who's <laughs> featured in edition one, who was over for your birthday just this weekend. Yeah, so, like, the, the community that we've built around We Are Makers is not just, like, we'll feature you once and never speak to you again. Yeah. It's literally, yeah. they have become friends, which is just amazing. It sounds like you've built, like, a full, like, family. Yeah, yeah. pretty it's much. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a life, I think it's a lifestyle business, isn't it? Like this, this yeah. is absolutely our life. Yeah. And for better or for worse, it's everything we do. Mm -hmm. And we've, I don't think, for me, I mean, I know you love Canton, Georgia. For yeah. me, I don't think I've got a favourite, like I love just being on the move. Yeah. I don't think I've got a favourite person because everyone's so unique. I've definitely not got a favourite place. But I do love being on the move. Yeah. yeah. We're better on the road. On the move. 100%. Yeah, it's There's good. a lot of places I'd like to go to, though. There's a couple of cool makers <sighs> in We've Nigeria. We've talked about selling our house and just getting a backpack and just, like, just... <sighs> That's the dream. <laughs> but the we're dream. not that confident dream. enough yet to do that. Yeah. We've got I, a dog, I would so. in a heartbeat. Oh. I would in an absolute heartbeat. Um, but I may be a bit irresponsible. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It would absolutely be irresponsible. <laughs> that would be... Okay. And what would be your dream... Um, Dream maker. Do you have a dream maker in mind? Someone that you you want? We'd, we'd like to go to Japan and see some of the, like the old school like. Oh craft. yeah, that's a good one. Mm, yeah, I'd, I'm be. fascinated by Japanese culture, especially in the making world. Yeah. Um, how we do that, I don't know. I've been learning Japanese Duolingo. Yeah. App. Um, you know how to say yeah. rice, water. I can ask for rice and water, and that's about it at the moment. <laughs> uh, and tell someone they're a good teacher, and that is literally about it at the yeah. moment. Um, Do you think it goes like that, though? It's like the bear has green eyes, and yeah. you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> that right? So, but I think um, I would love to go over there with a translator. There's some amazing makers in Seoul. Yeah. And there's also, we've found a little pocket of phenomenal people in Africa. Mm. A couple of really good Nigerian people. Uh, who was the woman you featured in? There's a four or five of them in addition two or three. Okajaka. They were doing, they were <laughs> yeah, like weaving baskets. Like, <laughs> like arts and the creative industries, I think when you really start to look deep is... For us, it's, it's a cool thing. Like For yeah. us, it's like a cool thing and it's a really cool career path. In some areas in the world, it is elevating people out of poverty. Yeah. And that is a side of creative mm. craft that I would really like to explore. Yeah. Because I suppose there's the, um, it's two parts to it. It's the, your business is getting people, well, already inspiring people that are in it and then getting people getting people inspired as well and I think having that element to it is is crazy very impressive makes me want to just give up everything and go on the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I does. suppose that's the thing you guys must be insanely busy how do you manage it all how do you manage we don't <laughs> <laughs> that's normally the answer yeah it's uh, it is full on at the minute isn't it like there's just there's too many things we want to do with not a big budget like we literally have we used all our savings to do this. So yep. um, basically we're just trying to work month by month at the minute, mm -hmm. um, seeing what projects come up. Um, obviously the magazines every, f you know, four months. Yep. So print is ex expensive. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's going up as well. Yeah. yeah, how much did print go up by like the between, paper? Between edition one and edition two, our print cost went up by 123%. Oh Mental. my god! Yeah, and at that point we're like, COVID thing, right? how do we navigate such like a price hike? Yeah, and I'd say after that it's gone up probably on average eighteen to twenty-two percent every it's single. Going up. Yeah. Why? Do, why is it? It's just 
the cost of things go up. A lot of paper so comes from... So this is out of the podcast. Yeah. Just yeah. like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> paper, a lot of paper comes from Eastern Europe. And yeah. Eastern Europe's not in the best of places at the minute. So. Yeah, so everything's going up. But, um, yeah, it's just... Mm, there's so many different things we want to do and it's trying to just narrow down. Trying to not do too much that you can only do everything, you know, so well. Yeah, yeah, we... we we kind of, we spent the first five years doing this, right? For anyone listening, getting wider, getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now it's hone that in. Yeah. yeah. We spent the first five we years do. gaining an audience. What are the things we can do well? Yeah. Um, and what are the things that need to drop? And they're just honest conversations you have to have with yourself. Like, what are the things that just need to go? Yeah. And I think for anybody else that has, that is a maker or that's listening to this, that's got a creative business, like, you have to have those honest conversations with yourself. What's not working? Mm -hmm. Even if there are things you really like, yeah. what's not working? Because it needs to go. Which is a hard conversation to have. And you've had some really good newsletters in the past couple of months. We've doubled down on our newsletters. Yeah. Um, I think they're the biggest lever for any business, a newsletter. Yeah. Because they are your customers and they want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And if social media goes, you've still got that. Yeah. Which is a really important thing. Um, so we really hold, you've done a lot of work on your newsletter just trying to like what things have we learned that we can not advise on but like say yeah. our experience and a lot yeah. of people have taken f a yeah. lot from that. Try not to be preach your advice eh? and yeah. uh, recently three weeks ago we changed to a three to one method for our newsletter so three maker stories, two things we are working on and one thing we've learned that other creative businesses can Im implement. Nice. Um, and it's really interesting what looking at the analytics of that and where people have clicked through like there is a large portion of people that just follow us to find out more about other makers. Yeah. Amazing, that's why we're here. There is a large portion of people that read about what we're doing. Amazing, that's a lot of brand loyalty that I see that as. Yeah. And then there is a, still a big portion of people that click on the bottom link and, you know, what have you learned? What can I implement in my business? Which is great to be able to be in a position where I would never be one of those Instagram, like, follow my course, buy my course. Like, it just does not appeal to me in the slightest. But it is great to know that we've learned something, because we've had to learn so much to do this. Yeah. That we've learned something that other people can take something from. Yeah. Which leads me, you segued very nicely into my next question. <laughs> <laughs> it was like almost planned. <laughs> um, what would be your one tip for those wanting to start a business? Like your one golden tip. Go all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just Go start, on. just start because like you'll just be thinking about it for, you know, you could have started it a year ago and wish you'd, you know. Just Find start. someone to bounce ideas off as well. Yeah. I, th I don't think it can be one golden tip. I think one doesn't come without the other. I think you have to go all in and we work together. Even when I was still working full time and you were on this full time, we still bounced a lot off each other. That's all we talked about. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you need that you need to either have friends or other people that you're like this is what I need someone to just even someone to I've got a friend who works in a completely different industry and every weekend we call and he's like did you do that this weekend or I'll be did you do that this yeah, weekend and, and that's really important especially in a creative business because it's so easy to chase the next shiny object yeah and what what was that newsletter you did not long ago about, about a you can do anything but you can't do everything which is a really yeah. big one because you can have all these ideas but actually you can only do a one or two yeah um, with a maker exit you could make all these different products but actually doing all that can just you know confuse your customers also <laughs> like when you're like i don't really know what you do you just do a lot of different things but simplicity like, sells yeah yeah it's like what you just said a moment ago that you can't do everything you have yeah. to it's good to do, to do two things really well yeah. i think they say that like when you're starting um like social media start with like two channels that like maybe it's a don't go for everything yes. or yeah. start doing newsletters but you guys are in a, a good enough like place now to be able to manage everything yeah well so yeah we're best. on <laughs> Yeah. We're on almost every channel. I think 10 social media channels, of which two of them, Instagram and Threads, are our main concentration. Yeah. The rest of them and YouTube. are... And YouTube, sorry. Yeah, you must I almost don't. I almost don't consider YouTube as a social media because it's not that like, short-form content. It's like yeah. a channel, right? Yeah. But um, So we really, the Instagram, Threads and YouTube, but all the other social medias are just posting like reposting stuff and the reason for that is mainly just to hold the space yeah just 
keep a hold of the space, make sure your domain's attached to the space. Yeah, that, that everything's up to date. Yeah. Which is hard and, you know, social media is like a full-time job and we try to tell that to makers as well, like just, you know, just show up and enjoy it rather than it having to be a chore. Yeah. Because when it becomes a chore, you just don't do it. So if you can just use that social media channel to be, you, you know, there's quite a few makers we go on to and I'm just, I want to see what they're up to. Yeah. Yeah. And they come onto their stories, tell us what they're doing for the day, what they've got going on. And it's just a really nice way to connect with your customer or community because, you know, you know, they're buying into you at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. You can also tailor out the things you don't like about social media. Like anyone that doesn't know, you can hit the three dots, don't show me this account. Yeah. I do that so much. Because <laughs> there's stuff I don't want to see, right? We've yeah. got a very clear niche that we want to look at as makers. So anything that's like some viral nonsense, like don't want to see it. Yeah. Also threads at the moment is wicked. Is yeah. I, I'm not a Threads is just full of friends. lovely people. No, it's good. It, we, it's like Twitter or oh, X now, a bit like that. Yeah. Feel like good folk though. <laughs> yeah, we were over in the States at the time when it came out and we must have been like, I don't know what number were we? We were like in the thousands? We're in the, yeah, we were in it like, I, th I think it, it was just under 400,000 or something And like I was that. so excited. I was like, this this is a platform that we need, like just like a text-based yeah. platform where you connect with other people. Yeah. And the vibe on it was great. And then it kind of dipped off a bit. Everybody was like, ah, boring. Bang now. But now it's just like on its way up again. Oh. Like we shared a, a post on threads to say like, who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Come join, like share your work. And it got thousands of people just sharing the work. I think when I last checked, it was just under 1,800 comments. Yeah, and it was just like, the amount of engagement on there was crazy. And we found some really cool makers from there. Who and other people finding the each other. Oh. You know, like a paper uh, maker um, was connected with an illustrator and they're like, oh, I want to use your paper. And it's just like, like, why would you not? You see these oh little silos God. start yeah. happening yeah. within the comments and it's great. Yeah, because they always fantastic. do it on Instagram now. They have like the little bit and it always tempts me. It has like, um, does a thread like that knows me so well something that makes yeah. me I'm going to click on it and I'm yeah. like oh but I've got to download it so I'm like infuriated but I think you guys have officially convinced me and I will it's follow you on good. threads yeah, <laughs> but I think we might I think we have it for Rubio personally I don't I don't have it but um, I think we have it so we must follow you because it just automatically yeah. logs it just automatically starts off. following which is even better it's I really think. handy it's just uh, you described it the other day what was it? it's like was it you that described it or did you show me a post? I can't remember. It's like threads is just where you post the stuff that's running through your head without thinking about it. Yeah. And it's wicked for that. <laughs> I love that. You don't have to spend all day thinking, what am I going to post today? Yeah. Cause yeah. It's just like get it out there. Yeah, a big like that. I suppose you guys have met with, with many makers and, and uh, spoken to them in person and long, oh, oh my God, I can't speak <laughs> online. Yeah. Um, is there a trait among them that you can identify that makes them a successful maker? Is there something that stands out for success? So someone that wants to get into making, yeah, yeah. what is, I guess, a good trait? I don't know if that question fully makes sense. It just no, came it does. to me. <laughs> no, it does. Tenacity. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm. There is not a lot of space in the world to stick your head above the parapet of everybody else sticking their head above the parapet. You need to be really, really tall to stand <laughs> there. Um, and it's just tenacity. Tenacity, which is hand in hand with consistency. Yeah. If you can do that, if you can be the kind of person that makes your thing, posts your thing, tells the world about your thing in X different ways, if you can do that every single day for 100 days without thinking about what's coming back of it, you will see a return. Yeah. I, I would... And just showing up. Yeah. Showing up. Yeah. For, just showing up. Yeah. And expecting. do it for 100 days. Don't just do it for... 10 days, 20 days, thinking, like, do it for 100 days. You can't do anything at the minute online to put your business out in less than 100 days, yeah. I don't think. Well, it's been proven somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah in one of the books. Yeah, one of the books <laughs> that we've read. <laughs> yeah, but I think that would definitely be the one. Yeah. 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 I, think tenacity, I think you need tenacity. I mean, don't get me wrong, tenacity can't outweigh creativity. Like, you do need to have an innate creativity inside yourself, but... Yeah. Just to be creative, unfortunately, is not enough right now. Yeah. And you guys started a podcast, and you said you have, you've on your six. Is it? Well, how many podcasts? Seventy-six. 
76 is in the bank. Ne- between this week and next week, we'll be at 80. What made you start the podcast? Hey, what was our first podcast, actually? It was Rapture and Wright. Yeah. Um, where are they from here? Rapture and Wright are Cotswolds. Cotswolds. And uh, I don't know, I think we were just, we had the magazine nailed and we are like, what, what can we do in the digital space that will complement the magazine? Yeah. We're like, got to be a podcast. Like, how else can we share the maker story? We're pretty anti-short form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're pretty anti-short form now. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hadn't, I'd seen a few maker podcasts, but they'd all been online. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just travel to people's workshops and do it there? Because, you know, being able to watch the podcast as well, like you're doing now, it's like you can see the emotions and everything else that goes with it. And you can see the workshop, you can see the space and people can connect with that. Um, so we're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get the kit. You spend a couple of weeks just like, what kit can you get that you can travel with? Which is something now that we've got nailed. But yeah, um, yeah we're like, we've got to share more stories and that has to be podcasts. Yeah. yeah. It's a natural progression, especially yeah. for what you guys do. Mm-hmm. You've got the magazine, then you've got the YouTube, you've got long form video and then the podcast. They all complement each other exactly. so well. They all just make up. Mm-hmm. make up the business and we've obviously um featured some people in the magazine and we've gone on to do a podcast which is quite nice because you're getting yeah, to the a deep, side. yeah you're getting a deeper understanding of like who they are and what they do yep. and you know you connect differently with that so yeah different way to get attention i suppose mm-hmm. do you have an ideal i know we said about um meeting makers the ideal maker do you have an ideal podcast guest because could it be i guess anyone in the makers Sphere yeah. or outside the maker. Do you have an ideal guest? I don't know if we have an ideal <laughs> guest. Uh, some, sometimes it's on us as a host to, as a podcast host, to get the best out of people. Mm-hmm. The, the ideal guest is, of course, someone that makes our life easy. Someone yeah. that we're like, <laughs> so who are? And then they just give it all. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, of course, the absolute ideal. But in saying that, sometimes people that are a bit shyer and don't want to talk as up, you get some really, really good stuff out of them. You just yeah. have to work really hard for it, which I certainly don't mind working. But like our, our, rule with the, yeah. our rule with the podcast is it's their podcast, we are just bringing the kit. Give us a thread to pull on and we'll keep pulling. Yeah, I love it because when I interview, we mostly do like woodworkers um, and they're always like, oh, we're so introverted. But as soon as they start speaking about their passion, it's, it's like, yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. And afterwards, I'm like, have you, have you done this before? They're like, no. I'm like, mm, you're very good at it. Like people, when you start speaking about what you love, it becomes mm. easy. It's like listening to you guys talk about what you do. It's yeah. just, it flows in so nicely. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is just that passionate people again. And again, it, it still comes back to that full-time people or people that are trying to make it full-time. That really is... Because speaking to makers um, encourages other makers. Like they get a lot from that because we've had so many people tag us on Instagram saying, oh, I'm just listening to the BR Makers podcast while I'm working and it's giving me a lot of information and advice and tips and motivation. I'm like, yeah, that's another aspect to the podcast. It's yeah. not just telling their story to, I don't know, people who may want to buy their stuff. It's to other makers who can be like, oh, I'm not doing this alone. I'm, there's somebody who's struggling just as much as me or there's somebody yep. who's, you know, doing something I'm doing or, you know, it's, yeah. It's very mm-hmm. rare that the problem one maker or even ourselves mm-hmm. is up against. It's very, very rare that you're the only person up against that problem. But sometimes yeah. it feels like you are. Yeah. Yeah. But you definitely are. Yeah, you live yeah. a lot of time in your own head, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of time <laughs> in your own head. <laughs> And I suppose, do you have any tips for those wanting to do what you've done very successfully to create like their passion into their career? Except that it's going to be your life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be everything that you do. Yeah. Kate and I are married, been married a number of years now, been together 13 years. Mm-hmm. And for the past five years, this has been everything we've yeah. done. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't change that, but had we not gone in with the... Had we gone in under false pretense thinking this wouldn't be everything we ever done and that actually we'd be doing it Monday to Friday, 9 till 5, no. it would have failed <laughs> it drastically. Is all the time, 24-7. Dreaming you know. about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. We sit down at dinner and we try to think of something outside work and we're like, nah, because we love it so much, so why would we talk about anything oh, else, you know? So it's like yeah. the trifecta. Is it the Japanese... Um, the trifecta of like you, you love what you do, your job, and everything becomes it, um, one. It seems like you're achieving. 
I get there's like I three or four Japanese things I always get them mixed up. I can't think what um <laughs> it's what not it's Kintsugi, called. it's Kintsugi's fixing bowls. Um, <laughs> We can use it. Oh, we'll we'll come insert to it. later. Yeah, yeah. we'll insert later. think of it. Yeah. And what would you guys be doing if not this? So in a parallel That's universe, special. We Are Makers doesn't exist. What do you think you guys would be doing instead? I'd like to think I'd be doing some sort of making. Um, obviously, I did leather uh, yeah. as well. So Jack did a hobby, like Kickstarter with her leather. You, mm -hmm. You're working full time, but you wanted that creative... Yeah, and you were like, I want to do some leather belts, and you started to kickstart, which really well. Um, people are still wanting your belts, even though we don't yeah, do it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a message for someone the other day. It's, like, hey, yeah. it's been 10 years since I bought the last belt. I think I need a new one. Can I get one of yours? I was like, I hey, don't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I've got time. Yeah. Um, and so when I was in that sort of period where um, I was living down south, mm -hmm. not sure what I was wanting to do yet, I thought, well, why don't I start? taking over your leather stuff and give me yeah. something to learn. You've done a great job of it as well. And it was great, but oh, I had the same issues as I had with furniture. Like, how do people, you know, stand up from the crowd and share your work? It was very hard, difficult. So, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with this question. What would we be doing if it wasn't? Oh, yeah, it would definitely be something yeah. making, whether it was leather work, whether it was maybe even trying pottery. I tried that in the States, loved it. It was a kick wheel. I loved it, rather than yeah. the electric wheels. Yeah. Um, or, like, I tried engraving with Paul Hamler. Oh, I loved that. Um, what else? I'd love to try glass work. There's so many things I'd yeah, love to try. Yeah, you get to try when you're with we us, are. Mike, as well. You get to try. Exactly. You did, you did um, chainsaw carving with our chainsaw last podcast last week. He, he made an owl. It was amazing. That is so he, he, cool. He turned a bowl with uh, Christopher bowl, in huh? Texas. It was it got it on our, our kitchen table now? It's great. Like so, yeah. You get to try lots of different things, and we'll I'd definitely be doing something yeah, creative, I, I wouldn't we? Yeah. I, I have a bit of a fascination with uh, very very efficient architecture, like tiny houses and shepherd huts. I'd probably do something in that. Yeah. Well, it's an engineer for, background. Yeah, too, but I've that got would an engineer background. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll probably do something in that for a couple of years, and then I'll try something else, and I'll try something else. I think uh, I'd like to do some precious metal work. Yeah. I'd like to do some, um, what was it you call it, Perus perusery? What's that? It's the hammer and it's like making these bowls, like the hand making of these bowls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, just look at that. that, I don't even think anything, I'm like, that exists. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> the thing. Like the time and effort yeah. yeah. has gone into that. I think, oh, I don't know, but then there'd always be part of me that's like, what next? What next? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, whereas here we get to try it all. Yeah, you can't imagine your life without this now. It must yeah. be hard. <laughs> yeah. But you must be inspiring so many people to get into it. I hope I so. Think, so. Yeah. I really hope so. Yeah. Especially that would if you're coming like first time trying it for yourselves as well and other people think, well, I can give that a go. Exactly. It's not as hard as you think it is. I mean, you you said, you said someone said to us, what's success to you? Yeah. And we're like, hmm, what is success to us? And you said, what did you say? You, you, you had a Su one. Success, not just to us, but to, to we are makers yeah. would be in five or ten years yeah, meeting right. someone who was like, hey, I was at school, I was lost because of seeing your magazine, I seen other people were doing it. I'm now doing it and I'm doing it full time. That, like that, to me, that would be like mission complete. Cool. Yeah. Do you know what's great is that, you know, you can, on, our, on our store, you can see who buys a magazine. And we've got lots of different universities and schools that subscribe to our magazine. Yeah. And they've got it in their library for inspiring others. I was like, great. Yeah. That's lovely. If, I wish I had that when I was yeah. studying. So, you know, if that's. I'd be quite happy with that. Just to inspire someone to do yeah. it into the passion. I love that. That's what success is. That is lovely. Yeah. I wish I asked that question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what are your plans for 2024? What are your goals for this year? Yeah. We've got Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Being on the road more, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We've got Australia. We're going to come back from Australia, do another Scotland and Ireland podcast tour. And our podcast tours will turn more into just tours as we build more of our editorial stuff into the magazine because some of it will be podcasts, some of it will be photo content, some of it will be whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd like to release another couple of short documentaries. We've got two of them on the, in the editing room right now that will be coming out in the next few weeks. Danny, our videographer, um, has been helping us kind of grow our little mini documentaries. So um, we're kind of hoping that they're just short, like six minutes or eight minutes long. So, you know, it doesn't take everybody's time up, but like it just gives you a nice look into their lives as a maker. But like, you know, 
you know, how did you get started? Where are you based? You know, where are you going with it? Sort of thing. Um, and it's just another avenue for us to tell their story. Um, so we're excited about them. Very excited about them. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully the States at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, I'd like to be flying out to Texas tail end of August. We're in Washington State early September. Then probably fly over to the East Coast and make our way down to the East Coast and finish up in Georgia again. Yeah. Such an exciting... You don't know what you're going to do the next well, day. It's so exciting. No. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Each day yep. is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that and just continuing to build the subscriber base for the magazine. Yeah. That really is what affords us the ability to bring better content to people and feature more makers. Yeah. Is since going quarterly, we opened up our magazine to subscriptions. Yeah. So... People subscribing to the We Are Makers magazine, that makes the biggest difference. Yeah. And is there anything coming up you'd like to promote? Anything anyone can get involved in? I mean, it's just all our channels. Like yeah. the obviously we're at we are underscore makers on everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if it's if you're allowed to put an underscore in it, it's there. So whether that's Instagram, Threads, YouTube. Twitter, TikTok. Subscribing to our YouTube is probably a big thing because yeah. you know, like it's crazy the amount the amount of people who watch our YouTube but aren't actually subscribed, but yeah. subscribed does make a big difference. Eighty four I think I see that on that um on another popular podcast about businesses and yeah. maybe diaries and CEOs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, they he says that on every video he says yeah, that's mental like, not subscribe and I think God, as soon as I see a podcast I'm like boom, yeah. subscribe. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm much the same. Um Following on Spotify, We Are Makers Podcast, that's uh, that's great. It just gives, all that stuff gives us real clear analytics, maybe from an engineering background, it gives me really clear data points to look at to see where we either need to make improvements or where we need to double down on what we're already doing. And then, yeah, the, the biggest one would be the magazine, the wearemakers.shop, subscribing to the magazine, You'll get four editions You'll a year. never be disappointed. Like, no. it, like it's wild. It's so one of the good. hardest things for us is to try and sell a magazine online. Yeah. People don't actually understand the quality of it because it's not like a glossy mag. It literally is high quality paper. Yeah. It smells, looks good. You know, yeah. it, it's got all the good things you want in a magazine. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's our plug. <laughs> that's our plug. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are seriously impressive. You're oh, doing thanks. about ten people's jobs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Each. We feel it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Each, but you can tell the success of your business and what you do is down to passion and hard work. Mm, and I think yeah. that really comes across. And I think people aren't already, people all end up buying for you guys. Yeah. And also everything is incredible. You guys are just so and inspirational. I'm just like, right, I need to go out and do something now. <laughs> That's what you make me feel yeah. like. Yeah. So you. imagine oh, you, you yeah. inspire a lot. So thank you. I know it was a very, very long journey down. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for making it. Oh, no, thanks for having us on. We, we, we just love doing this kind of stuff in person. I think. Um, like when I spoke to you originally there's, yeah. there's something I think we're all lacking with uh, human, connection. human connection Yeah, it's so convenient to do stuff online yeah. and it's, it doesn't make it the right and thing you can see like if someone's going to speak but online you have the delay and you're talking all over you're each like, other ah. and so, but you can see you can, yeah, you're right it's so much better doing it in person I think this is the only third one we've done in person now so it has inspired me I think to keep keep doing it and hopefully I'll get over to America by yeah. doing that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that's but it. Because it's get yourself on a mon on, yeah. on, on your way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's really good. It is really, really good. It's uh, it's afforded us a lot of experiences. It's doing We Are Makers has afforded us a lot of hardships, mm -hmm. but the experiences that have come out the back here are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I look forward to seeing what you guys are up to in the future. I'll be looking on all the Lots. channels and I'll subscribe to the YouTube. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Thank yeah. you so oh, much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate your time. Cheers. Cheers.